Hey everyone, um, I wanted to share with you a deck that I received or that I had for a while that I actually use quite a bit. Um, it, it's called the Modern Spellcasters Tarot um, by Melanie Marquise, illustrated by Scott Murphy. Um, the reason why I got this deck is because I really wanted to find a deck that allows me to be able to read like earth energies and if something is more earthy because when I when I want to talk about when I when I want to see about what the energies are going on in on the earth as general I needed something that's a little bit more that allows me to connect more to the earth energies and because you know normally I use the traditional Rider Waite Smith decks and that is more of like what's going on in people's lives and what's going on and how they how it affects them or how they're moving through it i needed something that allows me to connect closer to earth and i kind of found that with this with this tarot deck and i ended up really really liking it and now i want to share it with you so um so you'll probably see it in a couple of the readings that i do especially if i, I do things that are more earth based you'll see me pulling out this deck um, there are some differences. This deck does follow the Rider Waite Smith system, but there are a couple changes, and um, that makes it a little bit different. And um, it can throw some people off. But if you're just kind of new and beginning, I don't think it's going to be a really big deal um, if you understand what the changes are and what they represent and what they mean. Kind of like, for instance, the wands in this traditional Rider Waite Smith is represents fire and the swords in traditional Rider Waite Smith represents air. In this particular deck, they represent the wands represent air and the swords represent fire. So there's there is a little bit of a difference. Um, some people might ask because when and we'll sh I'll show it to you here in a minute, but um, some people do definitely ask they go because it is a spell casters, it probably follows more of the, the Wiccan or people who cast spells. I don't do that, so I don't use those. I don't use this deck for that thing, so I couldn't tell you how this deck works in that regard. So, anyways, but it does come in this box. This, um, it's a one of those nice boxes that definitely looks really great on a shelf. Um, and it has a magnetic snap. So, and it's a, it's very well presented with the magnetic snaps and you see the, the elements that are represented on in this, you know, the fish is for water, the wolves are for fire, the birds are for air, the squirrels are for earth. So that's great. So the book right here. So I don't have the cards in here, but I'll definitely show you. But there is a ribbon in there to help bring it in and out. I don't keep my deck my deck in this box is because to me, I use this deck so much, I just don't want to keep taking it in and out. So to me, I put it in a bag and here's my bag that I keep the decks in and I'll show them to you in a minute. Um, so I keep mine in a, in a, in a bag, but at least I can keep when I'm ready to store those cards away, I'll store them in this box. So here's the book. It is a color book. <clears throat> it's got a lot of information in it. Um, you know, how to use your deck for magic. Like I said, I don't use it for this purpose. Um, when you get into it, um, it will give you some basic information of what the card is, its basic meanings, it has a reversal meaning, and if you go and it also gives you information for like magical uses. So this deck has is filled with information, or this book, excuse me, this book, this book, this book, this book, and it's, beautiful. it's got great color pictures. So um, it's basically, it's 78 cards. I'll go through the introduction. It'll give you some advice on how to begin working with the deck. I know there's some spreads in here somewhere. Maybe it's in the back. Ah, here they are. So it'll give you some spread ideas. Basic. Some basic spread ideas that work on this. Um, this book 
is 242 pages. So it's a great book for you to read. It's a good one. I'm glad I got it. So there it is. So let's go to the deck. So here's the deck. It's I, I put it in this bag because, like I said, I use this deck all the time. So, and here's the back. I'm going to see if I can get this up close where you can see it. There you go. All right. So it's a blue back. Um, you can't really see it, but it's kind of got all these things, kind of like a worn. This blue is kind of like a worn leather look. I don't know if I can get it close. Oh, there you go. You can see it a little bit better that way. So it's kind of kind of worn, what you know, leather look. It's not reversible. You can tell because of the animals. But um, it's a. It's great. It's actually great. So, anyways, the cardstock of this deck is very flimsy. So it's very thin, but it definitely makes for really easy shuffling. I like it. If you if you like thicker cardstock. This is not that deck. This is a thin cardstock, but it's it's glossy. You can tell it's actually very glossy. Um, and it does make for really easy shuffling because it's kind of slick. So it spreads easy. So it's, it's a very slick deck. Anyways, so we're going to turn over. And there is no borders. A lot of people talk about it. I like them without any borders. But um, let's go through the cards real quick. This particular fool is one of my most favorite fool depictions. This fool definitely, I mean, they don't have the rose in his hands, but, you know, this whole idea is like, okay, I'm just going to take off on my journey. And does he fly or does he fall? We don't know. You, this one's a little different. You have the sun in the top corner, but then you also have the moon down below that maybe there's water down there but you know this guy is between material what it but what his journey is going to be he's hasn't quite materialized he doesn't quite have you know ideas of what it should be if he does have any ideas it's locked up in his little bag and he's just ready for this new adventure so it's a very cool car so is he being a fool or is he going on a fool's journey so who knows? It depends on the reading, but it's one of my favorite fool cards. Here's the magician. And here's the high priestess. I like the fact that the high priestess, a lot of the people of like in institutions, they're faceless. Um, that kind of helps detach me and helps me get into the more what the energy means behind the cards versus versus a person sitting there. So there's the high priestess. There's the empress. So I really do like that earthy feel with her, especially the emperor. So you can kind of see why I like this for an earth-based reading. So here's the hierophant. This one just basically talks about the institutions and again, no face works out well. They could be good, bad. Oops, and I dropped my higher fin. Okay, never mind. Um, lover's card. Chariot. I like the chariot. It's kind of like universal energy moving because it's above the earth. It's energy moving that is beyond our control. Strength. The Hermit, the Wheel of Fortune, Justice, the Hangman. This Hangman is definitely not a Hangman I'm used to. Looks more to me like the person's in a coffin chained up and hanged from a tree versus you know, him being inverted and seeing things from new, new perspective and surrendering. So, but if I know that, that, um, description in my head, I can usually read the hangman pretty easy. But when I see this, it's kind of like jolting, <laughs> but it's all tied up. Everything's at a standstill. So it does, you know, 
appreciate that. If there's any meanings with these runes, I don't know because I haven't read those. There's the death card. Temperance. I like temperance. Kind of the Hermes feel. Messenger. Blending. Devil card. Tower. Star. The moon. The sun. I like the sun. Judgment. This is an interesting judgment. It kind of reminds me more of karma than like a calling. You know, like you're going to reap your karma. It's like, you know, you're either going to celebrate your su successes or you're going to suffer the consequences for what you've done. So karma. That's what I see more of this one. The world. I like that the, the wrapping around her is water. All the elements, the seasons. Now we're in wands. See, this one has the birds. So this is an element of air in this deck. And you'll see it more prevalently as we go on. So here's the two of wands. Conversing, listening, making choices. But it's kind of weird that he's tied to his choices. He's got to choose one or the other. I like this three of wands. You send out or <clears throat> you made your choice, you're sending it out. You're going to be waiting for the, res the response and see what it's done. Four of wands, the happy family. The five of wands, the argument card. I kind of funny. I, I crack up when I see that argument card because I look at them and I go, are they really arguing? Are they just being silly? Because somebody hits that beehive. They are in trouble. And he's like, yeah, you guys just keep going. <laughs> but I think it's more of a fun and not sure, even though you're all kind of on the same footing, you're all doing things. I mean, I don't really see full argument, but it, I can see. Competition. Celebration. The Six of Wands. So you see a lot of birds in this one, so it's very much reminiscence of air. Seven of Wands. Eight of Wands. Nine of Wands. Ten of Wands. One of my favorite page of Wands. I really like that. Knight of Wands. So this tells you it's an air element. He's riding a hawk. Queen of Wands. King of Wands. Now we're in Cups. Two of Cups. Three of Cups. Four of Cups. Five of Cups. Six of Cups, Seven of Cups, Eight of Cups, Nine of Cups. <laughs> this one really goes, wishes granted. Ten of Cups, Page of Cups. Well, this one is interesting because who's the page? <laughs> There are three of them. Who's the page? Knight of Cups, riding a fish. So this definitely lets you know it's a water element. Queen of Cups. King of Cups. And this will definitely tell you the swords are a fire element. Ace of Swords. Really cool. The cool wolf. Two of swords. Instead of the swords being crossed in the front, she crosses them in the back. Three of swords. Four of swords. 
five of swords, six of swords, seven of swords, eight of swords. Instead of a girl being bound, it's a guy. It's surrounded by fire. <laughs> Nine of Swords. So if you can see, even though it's a fire element, it still follows the Rider Waite Smith. So I think that if you're beginning, you're not going to have too terribly tough of a time following these cards. You just have to be aware that the elements have been switched in these cards. Ten of Swords. Page of Swords. Knight of Swords. Queen of Swords, King of Swords, and finally, Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles, Two of Pentacles, Three of Pentacles, Four of Pentacles, Five of Pentacles, Six of Pentacles, Seven of Pentacles, Eight of Pentacles, hard work, protecting. So you can see how there's a lot of earth-based elements into it, so it's easy to connect if you're looking for earth reading. Nine of Pentacles, Ten of Pentacles, Page of Pentacles, I love the diversity in this deck, too. Knight of Pentacles. Queen of Pentacles. King of Pentacles. So there you have it. There's this deck. Now let me just show you how it shuffles. I'll have to get my card that I dropped. <laughs> but I do the Riffle Shuffle on this one. Well, that wasn't a very good accent way to show. So when I do this, it works really nice. It bounces back into shape. How long this deck will last, I don't know. I mean, it's fairly new for me, but I ended up ending up using it an awful lot. So you can see it shuffles very well. Um, you can also do handover, which I do too. And what I really like is that when I lay the cards, because sometimes when you shuffle them, the cards can get bent, but you know, so they pretty much stay. But, you know, they actually kind of they lay flat. So, isn't that nice? The world, security, the earth, the completion. I love this deck. It's great. I hope you enjoyed this, and we will talk to you soon.